first the next speaker on behalf of the EFDD group, the Earl of Dartmouth. Three and a half minutes, you have the floor. Right, thank you, thank you, Chair. To start off with, let's address corruption in the Ukraine. The finance minister for the Ukraine was dismissed last week. The stated reason for the dismissal was disseminating, disseminating false information. So one has to ask, what was this? Well, very simply, the now ex-finance minister revealed, exposed, spilt the beans on corruption in the Ukraine. Now, hopefully, everyone here will agree that we must not condone, let alone be fellow travellers to corruption. Indeed, we must actively oppose it. Transparency International is a globally respected organisation, especially on anti-corruption. On its criteria, Ukraine is categorised as the second most corrupt country on the entire European continent. To put it another way, Ukraine rates even worse for corruption than the gangster-influenced regimes of Albania and Kosovo. Ukraine has delayed and delayed over and over again establishing an anti-corruption anti court. Vote or no vote, let us see how long it is before the president implements that vote. Worse, campaigners against corruption have been intimidated and in some cases imprisoned. To provide an example, on March 15th this year, one Nadia Savchenko testified on the corruption in the office of the President of Ukraine. One week later, Emma Savchenko was placed under arrest and charged with terror terrorism offences. The same President had previously awarded Emma Savchenko Ukraine's highest honour for, brever for bravery against terrorists. These practices must be deemed to be unacceptable. Every informed person, and that has to include the EU embassy in the Ukraine, and therefore the commissioner, knows about the appalling level of corruption in the Ukraine. The sacking of the finance minister last week for opposing corruption should have caused the alarm bells to ring. Instead, the considered response of the Ukraine groupies in the commission, and regrettably, in this parliament, and there are many honourable exceptions, is simply to hand out to Ukraine without question, without adequate audits, without enough consideration, these very large sums of money, all paid for by the taxpayer. What we are discussing this evening with such rapidity is over 1 billion euros. Now, by comparison, the International Monetary Fund is holding back on its assistance programs to the Ukraine, precisely because of well-founded concerns on corruption. On the objective criteria of the IMF, the Ukraine does not pass muster as a worthy recipient of large-scale funds. The EU should follow the same course as the IMF. These payments should not be made. 